I'm sure you would agree with me if I say artificial intelligence as a term is the most used term in the technology world. And if you go by the base promise of AI, it is about enabling missions to mimic human beings. Well, we're very far from that and such evidences are mostly shown in scientific fiction movies. This is dominantly termed as artificial general intelligence. What we see mostly around us in the current times is based on cognition and cognitive skills and this is termed as artificial intelligence. My name is Sandeep Palur and I work at Microsoft, a unique group called Microsoft Technology Center. This is such a testing time for businesses globally and also a time where we expect the base promise of AI to become a reality. I get to work a lot with customers and partners and if there is one dire need for today and tomorrow, it is about infusing AI into ambient computing. Well, that calls for a new paradigm shift in the world of computing termed as intelligent edge. We live in a world dominated by devices and the number of devices globally is expected to touch 50 billion by end of this decade. Today, technology has advanced to an extent where we have the power to put computing device to places that matters most to us. Well, you see quite a few devices around me right here and they're all come under the umbrella of edge devices. Let me give you an example of what is an intelligent edge by quoting a couple of real-time scenarios. I said intelligent edge before and these two scenarios should surface clarity. Number one, in the healthcare domain, as Microsoft, we work with Apollo hospitals to actually define and build a cardiovascular risk score for the country, right? This is a machine learning intelligent service hosted in the cloud, available for Apollo hospital to use it. That means anybody who walks into Apollo hospital and undergoes a cardiovascular test, the system comes back with a recommendation Right, a probability score which is indicative of whether the person is going to have an episode of cardiovascular in the near future or not. And if yes, what should be the suggested lifestyle changes? Look at the scenario here, right? At the hospitals, doctors and clinicians, they use tablets, right? Typically systems and they're all perceived to be a thin client. That means not much of a software installed there. It can be a typical simple application being hosted there and they feed that particular application with clinical trial data. The application makes a call to the public cloud, basically to this hosted intelligent service, and the service gives back responses, as I explained earlier. Now, if there's no connectivity, I think this overall life cycle breaks, right? So the end of the hour is for the system to intelligently operate with no connectivity, right? This is one classic example of an intelligent edge. Second one, one of a customer reached out to us and said, you know what, we manage hundreds of toll booths on highways, right? Um, and each of the toll booths, there's a manual process to take note of number plate and number of people who have traveled in the car. Not the identity, not the emotions, nothing, right? So basically the number of uh, people in the car and the identity. So this is where they want to see how computer vision as a technology can be used because you already have a lot of cameras that are available in the toll booths, right? Need of the art there is to actually have those cameras to be intelligent enough to automatically note down the number plate as well as identify number of people in the car, right? And, and again, we understand that in the highways, there may not be connectivity at certain junctions. Now, should the system fail there? Not at all, right? End of the day, irrespective of connectivity, the system should work. We see an explosion of devices and each of those devices are expected to operate under the umbrella of intelligent edge. In simple terms, they're effective irrespective of connectivity, and if connectivity exists, they bring in additional inference power to the edge devices. Now we're entering an interesting phase in the industry where communication networks is expected to be revolutionized by the much touted 5G networks. Imagine I mentioned intelligent edge before, and imagine the power of collective power, I would say, of devices in the 5G network. They operate like a mesh and they bring in additional intelligence um, in unison. I think that's going to take inferences to a whole new level. While we're talking about devices, what is interesting is also a construction of a massive corpus of data. Imagine the amount of data 
that this device is generating at any given point in time is leading to massive corpus of data. By the way, it's a good news because for AI to succeed, we need a real world representation and data is central to its success. With all this, with all the innovation happening all around us, if there's another stream that is fast emerging is automation and AI has a critical role to play in that construct. Let us look at the technology landscape and interestingly, bulk of the efforts from platform providers have been to democratize AI. This means there'll be very high level abstractions on tasks which are perceived to be complex by data scientists. Right? A quick example I can quote here is of a service called Automated Machine Learning on Microsoft Azure. Data scientists find it an extremely valuable tool because at the end of the day, it actually makes them highly productive in their tasks that they do on a daily basis. Now, if you look at data science lifecycle, the multiple things that happens in that particular lifecycle, but I'm going to quote two specific steps which are touted to be the most important ones of the lot. Number one, it is termed as feature engineering and number two, hyperparameter tuning. These are two technical terms for sure, but let me explain that simplified for you. Feature engineering. If you look at an earlier example I quoted, a healthcare example, let's bring that to the surface for a minute. Now, feature engineering is a task where the role of a data scientist is to identify features or data points which matters most to the model construction, right? In view of the expected outcome. Going back to the healthcare example, which of those parameters or data points should we choose to ensure we can successfully predict the outcome from a cardiovascular test, right? So this is where data scientists work hand in glove with domain specialists to identify those features, those parameters, which are much required for the model construction. So this task is feature engineering, which is where the automated machine learning simplifies to a greater extent. The second one is hyperparameter tuning. All of us should know that building a machine learning model involves multiple iterations. It is not a one-time activity by any chance. It is about relentlessly working on the model development over multiple iterations to ensure we get the most optimized output. Now, this is where system comes into play, level of automation, because this task involves a lot of time as well as compute resources. Now, machine takes over and changes values at every iteration with a view to optimize the model output and ensures it also chooses the right algorithm for the right data in view of the outcome expected. The best part is these platforms have the option to deploy those trained models onto edge devices like these. Right? Depending on the compute capacity available, you can deploy those models onto the devices in real time. In fact, if the compute resource is limited, you have an option to compact the model deployed. AI use cases have no boundary. And fact of the matter is, edge intelligence will be omnipresent as we take up some of the most profound use cases in the industry. Right off the bat, if you look at the current COVID and post-COVID times, the use cases to enforce everybody wears masks as well as social distancing becomes one of the classic use cases that everybody wants to solve, right? Again, a supervision is required all over the place. In fact, I've built a simple machine learning model and I've deployed that model to the edge. Let's take a look at it right away. That's a classic example of computer vision complementing intelligent edge device. Let's take a look at that. Now, as you see here, right now, I'm facing the camera and the model deployed on the camera is aptly able to recognize that I'm not wearing a mask to start with. As I wear the mask, it identifies that, yes, I am wearing a mask, right? This is a classic example of how inferences is happening at the edge device. By the way, the important point note here is there is no internet connectivity for this device, right? Again, a classic case of computer vision lighting up an intelligent edge scenario. Geriatrics is another area which is about elderly care, which is where the power of edge devices will come in handy as we look at overall well-being of elderly community in the society. Now, emerging technologies that will have a profound impact that will elevate all of experiences is in the area of speech and language. 
in fact in my view speech will be the single most desirable consumer interaction channel in the near future and for a long time to come now gpt3 you know this is an innovation from open ai group by the open ai group works to actually advance uh, ai by research to benefit humanity in general now gpt3 the full form is generative pre trained transformer in fact gpt3 is a very cool innovation you know it has the power to actually create fiction right given the author and the kind of vocabulary they have it creates creative fiction and it also has the capability to create business memos right so there's no limitation in terms of what you can do with this particular model in fact this is one of the classic evidences or examples of artificial general intelligence which i mentioned earlier in my talk another innovation quantum computing there's so much of innovation happening in that space in fact if it lives up to its promise the art of possibility as we take on some of the most profound use case in industrial reality very soon with all this it must be quite evident that the pace of innovation is at its acme in the midst of all this if there's one persona who takes center stage is a data scientist now the question is who is a data scientist and what do they do in fact before we get into understanding what a data scientist does it is important to understand a complementary role or a complementary stream which is data engineering in fact data engineers are also most sought after like today data scientists are most sought after data engineers are also sought after to ensure data science happens seamlessly so data engineers are the ones who actually bring data they actually ingest data aggregate data and they ensure they construct a single version of truth in fact once this repository is in place this actually marks the beginning of a data scientist journey so if you look at the data scientist role here the life cycle is quite elaborate in fact the bulk of their job goes into understanding the core fabric of the data they do an activity called exploratory data analysis it's short form eda that's a technical term and this is where they actually spend time to understand the data in its holistic sense to understand do they have the right data for the right problem on hand if the if there's lack of data then spin out data collection activity right end of the day for the problem on hand for the expected outcome from the business do we have the right data and if you have the right data proceed towards model construction and eventually deploy that to production in fact there's another role within this data science stream called ml developers in fact they play a critical role complement data scientists in in terms of helping them build these models they bring in python and r capabilities to a greater extent and they actually work hand in glove with data scientists to make it a reality end of the day devops in fact the process the automation when it comes to development life cycle itself here in this in the world of ai we call it machine learning ops that's also an emerging field and that's where ml developers also play a critical role to help data scientists make that a reality truly an exciting field of technology and the overall construct of intelligent edge can be a reality soon there's also a time where we have the right hardware components complemented by oems to ensure that we have the compute power at the edge networks now one important topic why we unleash the power of artificial intelligence it is about responsible ai as microsoft we released responsible ai design principles a while back and this is central to how each of us build models going forward to ensure there's no biases right it's absolute fair way of building model the model is secure privacy is safeguarded it is reliable and safe and utmost importance given to transparency and accountability i get to work a lot with enterprise customers and the discussion is around how can they light up their businesses with the base promise of ai and again if you want to break into the world of ai and if you aspire to become a data scientist time is now to invest welcome to the world of intelligent edge thank you so much and happy learning